Okay, uh, let's continue our lecture. Uh, today we will first uh, let's discuss about the wind and the tip. Uh, before that, I would like to do an uh, advertisement. <laughs> I just uh, received this email uh, last night. <laughs> Oh, oh, please, we're going to charge you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how much? <laughs> how much time you spend? Yeah? <laughs> well, this is a program uh, from the Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, called the Taiwan Young School Program. This is only for the young. Uh, young yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only for the uh, schooler from Taiwan Young School. So, now I switch to Chinese. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Oh, this is yes. Below, uh, 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 那我们就把它 每个月再给你补贴两千人民币<笑><笑><笑> <笑>这个这个program就是每年都有 Okay, uh, let's start. So, uh, first question is why we have special interest to uh, win uh, sometimes to work on other flows. This is a very hot topic in recent years in the fish community. I think that mainly because of two reasons. Uh, first is because of the 18 uh, Christian physics. Another one is uh, because of the 18 feedback. So why uh, uh, it is important for Christian physics? This is because uh, if outflow exists, for example, and if the mass flux of outflow is a very significant part of the Christian uh, rate, so you can imagine it must play a very important dynamic role to control the Christian dynamics. So this is one reason it affects the dynamic of Christian. Uh, also, it is very important for us to explain observations. Uh, if uh, outflow, strong outflow exists, the radio profile of the accretion rate, of course, will change. And the accretion rate controls everything, almost, uh, radiation spectrum. So this is also crucial for us to explain observation uh, spectrum. Uh, perhaps another more important reason why in recent years we have uh, interest in wind is because of the 18 feedback study. Because, uh, uh, Galaxy formation evolution is a much more bigger community uh, than black hole uh, uh, physics. So uh, in this in recent years, people have uh, almost uh, most of people agree aging feedback play a crucial role in uh, aging in galaxy formation evolution. 
so for the feedback, I, uh, if I have time, I will quickly brief through, uh, through each feedback in my last chapter. So basically, uh, for each feedback, we have two mediums. One is uh, radiation photons. Another one is uh, normal plasma matter, uh, jet, wind. So all these things, uh, jet, wind, radiation, will interact with the ISM, with the galaxy. Uh, so affect the star formation of the galaxy. So in this way, the whole evolution of the galaxy will be affected. And this is why uh, we have been interested to, uh, to wind. Because uh, wind play a very important role, one of the three media for eating uh, feedback. So, so far we already accumulated a, a lot of observational data for existence of the wind. Uh, first, I'd like to look at the evidence in the case of the cold pressure disk. Uh, this corresponds to luminous ATM-like uh, equation. So we already uh, observed many uh, blue shifted UV optical and X-ray absorption of the ETA. Okay. This is a uh, very obvious, obvious evidence for, uh, for wind. Uh, that was an BAL equation. We often call it broad absorption, the uh, broad shifted absorption line, BAL line. Uh, the second one is warm absorber. Okay. Uh, this is also evidence for wind. Uh, more recently, uh, from uh, X-ray observation, uh, we uh, some people found they call it a UFO, ultra-fast outflow from the ETA. This is usually observed in half X-ray. Uh, this team I did a lot of work in, in this uh, field. So basically, they found that the velocity of the wind can be as high as this value, okay. and the lamps are very close to that black hole. You can see it's a very small radius coming from must coming from the innermost region of the equation flow. Uh, say 100 square sphere radii or even smaller. So now let's look at the evidence for the uh, hot, uh, wind from hotter creation flow. This is uh, turned out to be much more difficult to uh, to detect. Uh, this is because uh, from the name hotter creation flow, we know uh, the plasma in this case is fully, almost fully ionized. So it is impossible to de detect any light of such light, right? So uh, the Euro uh, approach to detect the absorption line uh, fail in this case. But uh, still we uh, have uh, other evidence. So here are some examples. Uh, one is uh, uh, in published in this paper. Uh, they, they observe a very low luminosity. Yeah. The total luminosity, the electrical luminosity, is as low as, uh, if I remember correctly, is 10 to minus 5, right? So very low. So we found evidence for the point. Oh, yeah. Uh, another uh, evidence is uh, from the radio galaxy, also this people did uh, uh, some work. Uh, especially they found that the wind can coexist with the jet. So you know, uh, jet is uh, usually uh, only exist in the hot cruising flow. So this means hot cruising flow can really launch wind. So here, how many the temperature in this I talked about yesterday, uh, the temperature is a zero temperature. So depending on the radius, uh, the exact value is 10 to 12 over R. So at uh, 100 square the radii, the temperature will be 10 to 10 Kelvin. Yeah, very high. And also, we found uh, in this paper, we found evidence uh, for wind in the hot state of uh, black hole X-ray. In hot state, the standard model is also hot to push flow. But uh, compared to the case of the cold uh, wind from the cold equation phase, uh, currently we uh, don't have good observational constraints on the wind voltage uh, because all these are indirect evidence for the wind. So now we talk about the uh, launching mechanism uh, for, uh, for wind. So this is the momentum equation of the equation flow. So uh, this, uh, then we have uh, three terms in the right hand side of the equation. So all these three terms correspond to one mechanism of uh, wind launch. Okay. First one is, this is a gradient of the pressure, F pressure. So this corresponds to the thermal mechanism. Thermal, uh, I think I will explain in my next uh, slide. So this term is the Lorentz force uh, related to magnetic field. So the mechanism is uh, called a magnetic uh, mechanism. The last one is radiation term. This is radiation force. So the radiation can also uh, produce some wind. Okay. 
So uh, this is a uh, uh, <coughs> change we can skip because I have too much to say. Uh, so we, one famous uh, mechanism in this field is done for the pit. I think many of you know this uh, this model. Uh, they propose it this year, this paper. So basically, we just look at this uh, symmetric figure. So this is an equator plane of the equation is This is the rotation axis. Suppose there is a large scale colloidal magnetic field. Okay. So uh, because of the because of the rotation of the accretion disk, so the whole magnetic field line will be controlled and rotate with the same uh, velocity. So consider a fluid element anchored into this uh, magnetic field line. So this uh, fluid element will feel the force by the gravi by uh, by the black hole, gravitational force. On the other hand, because of the rotation of the whole magnetic field line, the fluid element also feels the force of uh, centrifugal force, which is in this direction. Okay. Uh, we have a third effect, which is a magnetic rotation, a frozen effect. Frozen, okay. yes, because this is uh, controlled by MHT. So this means the fluid element can only have motion around this field line. So combine this force, this force, and this uh, magnetic frozen effect, we will see if this angle satisfies a certain value, the total uh, motion of the fluid element will be along this line outward. So this is the launching of the wind. This is the case spirit of the band for the pin. So <coughs> However, this model is uh, kind of uh, too simplified in the sense it requires a lot of uh, things. Uh, for example, it must require an open and ordered large scale magnetic field. Okay. Uh, this kind of a field can be easily satisfied in the field of star formation. Okay. However, for black hole creation, this is much more difficult. The main reason is because the creation disk is much more turbulent compared to the protostar disk. So in this case, we, it is very difficult to have such kind of order large scale in the field. So, uh, this is, uh, so currently, uh, such kind of field, whether it is uh, exists or not, is still not clear. We have also uh, some, some people propose some different mechanisms uh, here at the skip. So the second one, we let's uh, introduce the thermal mechanisms. Thermal means uh, the radiation from the innermost region of the equation uh, disk will heat the equation flow at larger radii. So because uh, of the heating, the temperature at the large radii will become higher than the local constant temperature. Consequently, the thermal energy of the gas will be larger than the gravitational energy. So the gas will escape because of this such kind of heating. This is the spirit of the some more for the wind launching. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this kind of uh, me mechanism can only explain the wind uh, uh, escaping from the large radii of the of the oh, this is a key feature. Uh, far, far away from the black hole. So uh, the velocity should not be too high. Uh, now we talk about the uh, radiation uh, driven wind from synthesis. This is uh, one mechanism uh, people have mostly interested. A lot of work has to be done uh, in this aspect. <coughs> so what is the uh, meaning of the radiation driven? So this is uh, let's first, first consider electron scattering. For lunar CGN, the radiation uh, mechanism the momentum match the moment of the uh, outflow. This is our rational result. Okay. So if the gas is fully ionized, uh, means the temperature is high, so electron electric uh, is the only contributor to the radiation pressure. Okay. So in this case, only when the luminosity is larger than ordinary luminosity, and the radiation force larger than the gravitational force. You remember at the first, uh, day, uh, at the first uh, uh, lecture, uh, chapter, uh, I explain the meaning of adding the uh, luminosity. So adding luminosity means the radiation force balance the gravitational force. So this is uh, for you to easily understand. Only in this case, the radiation force can 
larger liquid tungsten bulbs, so uh, when they can be produced. So the problem of this uh, kind of in this case is the required uh, luminosity is very high. It required luminosity must be higher than it. This is not easily to be satisfied in the real case. So if we consider dust, this will be uh, easy. This is because uh, <coughs> the optical uh, depth, uh, the, the cross section, if we have dust, will become much, much larger than the Thompson cross section. So for the same given luminosity, the radiation form will become much, much larger because of the uh, 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 enhancement of the cross-section. Okay. So even though in this case uh, the luminosity is uh, smaller than the added luminosity, we can still have uh, radiation force larger than the gravitational force. So when it can be produced okay, if we have that. Uh, the most uh, popular idea people now study is the uh, so-called uh, line force. Okay. Line force, line. when you uh, see this word line, this means uh, uh, the gas in the wind is only partially ionized. It is not uh, fully ionized. Okay. In this case, uh, Thompson scattering is free free uh, scattering, right? But if the gas is only partially ionized, we will have additional scattering. It is a uh, free uh, bond emission. Okay. So in this case, the cross section again will become much larger compared to the tungsten scatter. Yeah. So this is why uh, uh, if the gas is a full, uh, uh, partially ionized, so if the, even though the luminosity is not so high, we can still have a very strong uh, radiation force, which is larger than the gravitational force and the force. Yeah. This is the most popular idea. Of how so uh, usually people use uh, this uh, line force multiplier to describe the enhancement of the cross section because of the uh, free bound transition. Okay. Uh, this value can be usually uh, in this range. Okay. This. So the first uh, model uh, was presented by uh, in this paper, Morales uh, uh, paper. They proposed. Uh, is the one that can be driven by the UV radiation of the crystals. This is the uh, taken from that paper. Uh, this is a central part of the crystal. The radiation uh, will interact with the gas here. Because of the line force, uh, the, this gas will, will, will form some more. Uh, Tell so me, what is the major line? Is the iron line? Uh, no, uh, it's, uh, because ions' uh, opacity is not as high as other elements, for example, o oxygen and so on, and carbon. But uh, for the massive star case, this iron bound usually was the main reason to drive the, the radiation-driven wind. Okay. Yeah, so because uh, when the photon is down the iron, they do the bubble protection. Okay. So Do you really assume a solar metallicity? Yeah. For massive star. Okay. Mm. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe I uh, remember that uh, memory is not correct. Yeah, this year I'm not so sure. Mm. Yeah. So one key point for this model is we need a such kind of region of uh, uh, high-key region uh, gas. So the meaning is if uh, we have, don't have such kind of gas, the uh, ionization by the central radiation here will be too strong. So the gas will be become uh, too strongly ionized. So the line force will be too weak. So we need such kind of gas to hide some uh, radiation so that the ionization here is not so strong. Okay. This is one key point of this model. So this is an analytical work. Uh, if you can see, uh, published earlier. Uh, <clears throat> uh, later on, uh, some people say in this work, they extend this work by numerical simulation. So uh, this is the setup of the numerical simulation. 
uh, this is the inner boundary of the simulation domain, but this is the outer boundary. It is just a simulated this region. So we uh, inject some radiation from the inner boundary to see what will happen to the gas. Okay. So the key finding is they found that the seeding gas now appear automatically. So they do not need to uh, assume some uh, seeding gas, because the seeding gas can be automatically produced. So this is a very good confirmed the original analytical model. So this is the simulation result. So you can see in this region, close to the equator plane of the crystal disk, some strong wind will be produced because of the radiation line force. Yeah, this is done in my group. Sometimes those could also be done. Okay. So, uh, but still, there are some limitations for this kind of uh, map design. Uh, first one is it's only effective for luminosity, even though we have line four. The luminosity is, can still cannot be too weak. Uh, the second one is not work well for sources with highly ionized gas or low luminosity sources. This is quite obvious, right? If the gas is uh, highly ionized, the force multiplier will be too very small. So it cannot uh, overcome the gravity. Uh, so uh, observationally, in some cases, we can directly determine the ionization state of the one. So we, we know how strongly ionized the gas is. Uh, for example, here I give you some example. For, this, for example, for this one, the luminosity is too low. Uh, for this one, they found that the ionization state is too strong, and so on. Okay. Uh, this is a backwards binary. In this case, I remember they also argue uh, the ionization is too strong, so uh, the line force mechanism should not work. So they argue they have to uh, use some magnetic uh, Okay, now we talk, uh, we, let's talk about the uh, weather from hot crystal flow. This is a uh, relatively uh, new uh, uh, study. Okay. Uh, this study beginning from this work, uh, Stone Point of Big Omen, this year. Okay. Uh, in this paper, they present the first global enough simulation of black hole crystal disk. Okay. Uh, what the uh, key founded is uh, the y-axis is the mass flux, and x-axis is the radius. So you can see uh, the, the, the solid line shows the inflow rate. The inflow rate is a function of radius. So closer to the black hole, the inflow rate becomes smaller. It is not a constant. This is the key function. At that time, this is a quite a surprising result. Because previously, people in this community always assume uh, creation rate should be a constant of radius. Why it decrease in volume? This is very surprising now. Okay. Uh, because of this, uh, in contrast uh, with uh, such kind of inward decrease, the density profile also flattens. Okay. So this is easy to understand. So if uh, creation rate is a constant radius, we should uh, just expect to have such kind of relationship. But now we have such kind of result. It is not 1.5, it is 0 0.85. Flat. Okay. And it is very interesting. Such kind of theoretical uh, uh, study was quickly confirmed by observation. Okay. So uh, I already uh, mentioned this uh, yesterday. But I uh, want to emphasize a little bit again. So this is an uh, observation to set the uh, star. The black hole is now galactic center. So from chamber observation combined with the black boundary accretion theory, so we can give a uh, good estimation to the boundary accretion rate, which is uh, 10 to minus 5 solar masses per year. Okay. This is one uh, observation value. So on the other hand, from uh, radio polarization observation, uh, we see a linear variation. And this gives us a constraint to the accretion rate close to the black hole horizon because of the rotation measure you may remember. Okay. The accretion rate determined from this observation should be in this range. 
So com comparing uh, this and these two numbers, you will see the creation rate must decrease in what? At, uh, in, uh, specifically, about 99% uh, of the gas available at the bounding radius will be lost. Only 1% can finally reach to the black hole horizon. This is directly uh, tell us by observation. Okay. So in this sense, this observation confirms such kind of uh, theoretical numerical uh, simulation result. A question where it must be pretty important. So this is a very good example. Uh, it is not so uh, common in the physics theory to see the observation. I think this should not be the main reason because the wind and the crease they are in the different direction. The wind, for example, usually in the cooler direction, but the crease around the equator plane, so they do not directly interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Only at a very large scale they will interact. But at large scale, what you said is really a very important effect. In fact, uh, we are using this idea to explain why uh, most aging we observe in subject dimension. Yeah. So now the question is, why uh, does the creation rate uh, decrease in what? Because numerical simulation is, uh, in some sense, it's just uh, like an uh, experiment, it's, except that we do this kind of experiment using computer or the, uh, other instrument. So, this means uh, after we uh, obtain such a simulation result, we still need to think about the underlying physics. Okay. So now what is the physics? So to explain such a simulation result, uh, two, uh, two group of uh, people proposed two different models. Okay. 
The first one is was proposed by Brandon Hall uh, in this year. Uh, this is a uh, one-dimensional path similar solution. And uh, this, uh, uh, this paper is a uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, model. So Brandon Hall, once while in a conference we met each other, he explained to me the detail how their model works. Then this I was wondering that the larger level did this uh, choosing models? Huh? Because I think Roger is a like, uh, pretty serious guy, so probably used to analytic work. Well, this is analytic. Yeah. This is uh, this paper is a two dimensional analytic work. So you know how good this uh, that that is. So uh, I remember if I remember correctly. This two uh, two thousand four paper, there is a uh, three hundred uh, or, or at least one hundred equation. Most of me found it. Yeah, for you it's pretty normal. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so the key spirit of this work is. They think the mass loss enough uh, is uh, because it, it, uh, a loss is arbitrary. So this is the reason why increase rate decrease uh, in war. But uh, please note uh, the, this uh, this is uh, in some sense is assumption in that model. So they focus on they construct a very complicated mathematical equation uh, solutions. So uh, this is a symmetric figure. Uh, we can see with the equation. Gradually, more and more gas will become uh, into, uh, lost in the wind. So finally, there were fewer and fewer gas reached to the back home. This is uh, one of them. We call it Adios. In Spanish, it means goodbye. <laughs> so the second model was proposed by this group of people. Okay? Uh, so two, two, actually, two people independently proposed all the same idea. So this, uh, this is really called it the convection dominated principle, so uh, theta. If you read the literature, you can still sometimes find the physical this uh, term. Okay. Uh, so the basic idea is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the host uh, uh, hydro accretion flow is completely unstable. Hydro means uh, if we do not consider magnetic field. So this is the truth. So because of this fact, uh, they propose a convective uh, envelope solution uh, uh, will be constructed. This is something similar to the convection motion in the sun. In the sun, if you know uh, solar physics, uh, in the sun, people have thought of uh, uh, convective envelope solution. So they construct a similar solution in the case of three disk. So uh, it is also very complicated. Okay. So the, the, the physics uh, scenario is uh, because it is convectively unstable, so the gas in the prison disk will just uh, circulate in convective eddies. So rather than the directly accreting to the black hole, they, uh, they are locked in convective eddies gradually. This is why uh, with the decrease of the radius, there will be fewer and fewer gas. And this is a basic idea. But uh, uh, there is a lot of debate on this kind of model. John Holly about uh, James Stone, so they, they, they have different opinions. Okay. And they debated for uh, more than 10 years. So this is uh, consider this situation. Different people have different ideas, uh, model. This is the motivation uh, why we want to do uh, some kind of work to, uh, uh, to study this problem. So in this year, uh, we did some work. Uh, the motivation is uh, which model is correct. At the most, the one model is correct, right? Uh, the basic idea is first we do some MHD and uh, HD numerical simulation. Then, based on this simulation result, we did some analytical analysis. So, the idea is if the convective turbulence dominates, we should expect the so called in inflow outflow uh, property should be the same because they are just the turbulence. So, uh, inward uh, outward motion statistically. Safe. So we can calculate the property of inflow flow using simulation data. Uh, but we found they are completely different. Okay, this is a conflict with uh, convection problems. The second uh, argument is we directly analyze the convective stability of MHD and flow. 
So it, uh, in, if there is no magnetic field, it is too, it is conductively unstable. But once we include magnetic field, this is uh, uh, this question whether it is still conductively stable or not, it is worthwhile to study. So we found it has become stable now. This means the base of the uh, CDAP model does not exist. So I was wondering, in, in this case, the uh, how the convective flow of parts is uh, on either this or this, mm -hmm. or is doing like this? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So our conclusion is we found the significant output much exists. So in this sense, uh, we support the ADOS model rather than the CDAP model. So this is the uh, comparison of properties of inflow outflow. This is so the radio velocity, this is so the angular momentum, and this is so the temperature. You can see uh, this desert line so is the, just the Calvarian angular momentum. Vertical line so the inflow, uh, uh, outflow angular momentum, and this solid line so the inflow angular momentum. You can see inflow outflow quite different. Okay. This means they are not just the simple turbulence, but they are real systematic outflow. And this slide shows how to be study the convective stability uh, for the case of energy and pressure flow. Okay. So it, the blue region shows they are stable. So only in some small region, so by the red power, uh, it is unstable. Uh, our work uh, was also very lucky confirmed in the next year by observation. Okay. This is a large uh, international collaboration consists of more than 60 uh, our, uh, uh, scientists. So we applied 3 million seconds of the general observation to observe this uh, century star. Okay. So this is, you, you, if you are familiar with observation, you know this is a very huge amount of the time. Okay. Yeah, yes. This is the largest observation program uh, on Chandra. So the key result is we obtained such kind of emission line. Uh, hydrogen like iron uh, kind of, uh, emission bar. So by fitting the line profile, we can obtain the radio density profile of the equation flow. So we found that the equation flow, the density profile must be quite flat. So remember, I just showed you in the previous slide. So in the case of the uh, strong out, uh, outflow wind, the density profile becomes flat. So this confirms that it's flat. And uh, from this, we can uh, uh, suggest that uh, a strong outflow should exist. So, in this year, we do some uh, additional work because previously we used indirect argument to show outflow or wind must exist, but that is not so direct evidence. So, in this work, we use some, we call it a virtual test particle trajectory uh, method. So the first thing is we first we did some three-dimensional uh, general relativity energy general simulation. So after finish this simulation, we just uh, uh, using the simulation data to track the trajectory of the test particles to see in this way we can directly see whether they are doing convective currents or directly uh, uh, move outward in the wind. This is quite a direct evidence. So this is a two-dimensional uh, trajectory, and this is a three-dimensional figure. You can see, look at this figure. This is a black hole location. This is a crystal plane of the equation flow. So you can see, around the equator plane, it is inflow and quite a turbulent. But in the polar region, it is the wind region. The test particle directly move out in the wind. Okay. So directly when we finally Solve this problem. Okay. Uh, by the way, we, let me see uh, this uh, work. This is the region of the black hole of China Yen okay. very close to the black hole of our rotation axis. And in this region, we, 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 we found the outflow velocity is quite high. It is roughly 0.4 speed of light. So it is also some kind of jet. But this kind of jet is different from black hole of China Yen So we call it a distant jet. And this is the region of the world. So uh, now I show you some movie. This movie uh, is based on the uh, our numerical simulation data. We just follow 
are used as data to show how each test particle will move. Uh, so this is the initial location of the test particle, then you can see they will move. The yellow color means the velocity is high, the red one means the velocity relative is small. So this is a different view angle. We asked a company in Shanghai to draw this movie for us. Because at that time, we are not good at that. This is the name of that company. They charged us 5,000 yuan in this Chinese. <laughs> so using this trajectory method, we not only can directly prove the existence of the wind, but also we can calculate the main properties of the wind. This is quite important for eating feedback study because we must know what is the mass flux of the wind and what is their velocity. All these quantities are very crucial for making feedback. And this can only be uh, calculated by the trajectory method because the accretion flow is quite turbulent. Okay. It's a euro, a euro way of streamline does not work here. So this is the calculation we have. Uh, mass flux, proidal speed of the wind. And, uh, so uh, this is the energy and the momentum of flux of the wind. So you can see the mass flux is a function of radius. And the radius is very large, and the mass flux is not very large. So this slide shows the mechanism of outflow production, why the wind can be produced. So basically, uh, we analyze different forces uh, uh, in the corona region or in the wind region. So this uh, blue arrow shows the gravitational force. And this uh, red one is the uh, centrifugal force. This, this green and the orange one show the gradient of the gas and the magnetic pressure. And the sum is shown by the uh, thick uh, black uh, arrow. So you can see the total force is how this is why it wants to be produced accelerated. Okay. So this is a different from that of the pit. So I do not uh, want to touch detail. <coughs> So what is the difference of the wind and the jet? This is many people, uh, a question many people ask me. So let me summarize here. So the wind flux of the wind, uh, the mass flux of the wind is much, much larger than the mass flux in the jet. This is one key point. It differ by several orders of magnitude. Okay. The uh, second one is the velocity of the wind is much, much smaller than that of the jet. Jet is close to the speed of light. Velocity. But the wind is uh, several orders, uh, at least let's uh, say two orders or uh, ten times smaller uh, than the speed of light. But the energy flux uh, is uh, uh, complicated, so it depends on uh, uh, black hole speed. And uh, this, uh, this map means that basically a rested disk. So, anyway, this means how strong the magnetic field is in the space. So, okay. this is a little bit complicated. And also the momentum flux is the most comparable to that of the wind. So, but another uh, difference is uh, the, the opening angle of the jet is much smaller than that of the wind. I show you the figure uh, from this. Thing. You see, the jet view uh, opening angle very small, but the wind is quite large. So this means when uh, in terms of the eating feedback study. So the, the, the wind will have much larger solid open angle to interact with ISM. But the jet, it just appears through the galaxy, have very little energy deposit uh, in the galaxy. Like the, the laser here in my hand, okay? It is very difficult to use the laser to hit the gas in the room. But the wind is much more easy. So let's talk about uh, jet, uh, jet formation. This is a very old and uh, important topic, of course. Okay. Uh, I want to emphasize first that there is a different kind of jet, uh, if you look at it carefully, especially from the theoretical point of view. Uh, first, let's talk about the continuous jet. Here are some images of the jet from the early, yeah, from maybe all from 88. You are very 
uh, we also have jet from other skills. This is AT, this is Web3 binary, this is Companion Star. This is a gamma reverse. This is a collapse of us, uh, massive star. Also from JIT. So theoretically, when do we expect to see JIT? So this is the uh, uh, static uh, figure. Uh, with the increase of the equation rate, we can see when when we have uh, when the equation rate is very low, we will we should we will expect to see uh, JIT. This is the regime of total equation flow on real. Uh, also, in another two extremes, when the uh, 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 accretion rate is very high in the regime of simple eigenvalue accretion, we also expect to see jet. Simple eigenvalue case. But in the, uh, in the uh, middle, in the case of the synthesis, at least uh, theoretically, we do not expect to see jet. This is also consistent with observation in the high soft state of that way through life. But in the case of ETM, there is some complications because we have really loud pressure. Okay. Quasar is quite the luminous, or uh, pressure wave is high, but we still have a uh, jet, something more stable. So, what is the model for jet formation? Uh, so far, we have such kind of three models you can see frequently in the literature, especially in the former two. The first one is platform and TINAYAC uh, adaptation. The uh, uh, two key components of this uh, model is one is order magnetic field, another is uh, black hole master beam speed, master beam speed. This is two key components. Another model is uh, blank for the pin. So I already explained that just now. Uh, they require large scale uh, magnetic field. Uh, they uh, invoke magnetic to give a force to accelerate the wind. And finally, they can object. Uh, the third one is not so widely uh, seen uh, in the literature, but it's a quite important work proposed by Nathan Bell this year. Uh, it is uh, called an magnetic power uh, So basically, uh, the, 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 it is a gradient force of proidal magnetic pressure. So in this case, how what the strength would it be if it was larger? Uh, well, uh, the, the strength of magnetic field really is uh, uh, automatically or self consistently determined by the equation flow. So, usually you don't have much freedom, except uh, uh, the case of the map, I just mentioned a little bit. Okay. Uh, I will talk about the more uh, in my next slide. <laughs> so, now the question is uh, uh, among these three models, which one is applicable? First, plan for the Tinayak model is confirmed by numerical simulation. This is, uh, there are already no doubt. However, the plan for the pen model is still not confirmed yet. Okay. Because when we do numerical simulation, it's very hard to form some kind of ordered large scale magnetic fields, which is the key point of the plan for the pen model. Okay. This is this point that many, many people don't know. Uh, so the consensus uh, currently we have is we all agree large scale fluid magnetic field is required uh, to form a jet. Okay. So now the question is how about the third model, the magnetic power uh, model? Okay. The second uh, one is given the black for the Chinese mechanism can produce jet, but this does not mean the observed jet is explained by this mechanism. So before that, I show you it, this is a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Resolution not so high, but you can see uh, jet will be formed. <coughs> so uh, this is a uh, snapshot so clearly what is bad for the tire jet, what is this jet. So let's say some details about, about the DG jet. So there is a rotating black hole. There is also the anchor uh, by a magnetic field, a large sphere magnetic field. This field uh, extends to in, uh, infinity. Okay. Uh, there is an angle sphere around uh, this uh, rotating black hole. 
the space in this uh, atmosphere will rotate in the black hole. So this means the magnetic field line has to be also rotate with the black hole. So Royal field will be produced, and uh, they will they will have a gradient of this uh, toroidal magnetic field measure. So we will have a force along this stretch. Okay. This is why the jet can be formed. So the power of the PC jet formed in this way can be described by this equation. So directly, uh, this uh, uh, fire means the magnetic flux threading this black hole horizon. And this quantity is determined by the angular velocity of the black hole horizon. This is quite obvious. So uh, if the black hole is uh, more rapidly spinning, the power will be larger. And also, we, if the magnetic field flux is larger, the, the power will also be larger. Well, I just uh, skip that. Uh, this is a uh, map. Okay? Uh, I just want to say, using this slide, uh, we have uh, uh, if the magnetic field in the uh, crystal disk is very strong, in this case, PC jet will be very effective, very powerful. In the normal case, if the magnetic field is not so strong, PC jet is actually not the same. Okay? This is again many people. So another issue is mass loading in the black hole Titanium jet. Black hole PC jet is intrinsically uh, fully dominated by uh, pointing flux. There is almost, it is uh, in their original model, it is uh, uh, force free. There is almost no matter, okay, only uh, pointing flux. But observationally, we see the uh, radiation from the jet. So we need some matter in the jet. So uh, how to explain this? People have to think about the distribution. Uh, the, the proposed the best guess is that the mass loading is via pair creation. <coughs> completely. So now uh, uh, talk about this again. This again here. So the this again is the idea coming from this figure. This figure is taken from our uh, 2015 paper, so we study the wind using trajectory method. This plot shows the uh, uh, velocity of the wind as a function of a theta angle in this spherical coordinate. Okay. Theta angle. Okay. So you can see 8, 80, uh, 90 degree means the equator of okay. So uh, 0 and the 180 means the rotation axis. So you can see the wind velocity close to the rotation axis is much, much larger than the average. It is almost uh, speed, almost uh, 0 0.4 speed of light. So such kind of velocity is the main reason why we call this special wind as disk jet. Okay. Uh, this movie I don't need to show again. Okay. So the interesting point is this kind of wind or disk jet automatically already have many plasma in it and the velocity is so high already. So now the natural question is whether this kind of disk jet rather than DZ jet correspond to the observed jet in a jet. Okay, this is our main motivation. Okay. So this is the comparison of between DZ jet and the disk jet. The uh, disk jet is matter dominated, not point flux dominated. It is powered by the rotation of the Christian disk not the rotation of the black hole. Okay. So this could get present even when black hole speed is zero. Okay. Uh, skip that. Uh, there are some uh, papers. They try to uh, constrain this theoretical model from the observation of uh, data. But some works, uh, including works published in nature, I think that they are <laughs> Episodic jet. Episodic jet, people uh, uh, know not so much, but uh, uh, now uh, begin to run, uh, 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 more people pay more and more attention. 
So this is a comparison between this kind of uh, uh, continuous scan and, and episodic scan taken from this uh, paper. Okay, so they compare the different episodic and episodic spectrum also different, variation also different, and so on. So to explain such kind of uh, episodic jet, we just uh, look at the two kind of message both the sun. So in the case of sun, we have pseudo wind and corona mass ejection. Okay, this is very similar to the episodic jet okay. because they are episodic. So this is the symmetrical figure, different magnetic field operation uh, in black hole Christian disk. So pay attention to this uh, uh, number two uh, configuration, this magnetic field. Uh, because a Christian disk is turbulent, so the magnetic field line, in this case, can be uh, twisted into this shape. So, and the reconnection will occur here. So this is to explain the detail of the uh, kernel mass ejection the sun and also episodic jet in the black hole Christian disk. Okay, this is a uh, uh, symmetrical figure taken from our work. So uh, we argue uh, in the case of a Christian disk, very similar to the case of the sun, we have two kinds of magnetic field. Uh, one is open magnetic field, another one is a closed magnetic field. And for this kind of closed magnetic field, uh, because of turbulent motion of the Christian disk, reconnection will occur and form such a kind of flux wall. Okay, this is very similar to the formation of uh, I think it's named in the sound. Prominence. Prominence. Okay. Prominence. Yeah, prominence. Yeah, yeah. Prominence. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is, uh, <coughs> anyway, some flux roof will be formed in the corner region of the prison disk. Okay. And then at the beginning, such kind of flux roof will be in the force uh, balance. One force is because the magnetic uh, tension force, okay, magnetic field surrounding this. Uh, Put every this way. Another force is magnetic pressure, which is uh, the force is upward. Okay. However, uh, because of the top of the motion, the field line will be twisted. So uh, uh, this magnetic field line will come close enough, and uh, reconnection will occur here. This is so the uh, current sheet okay, of reconnection. So after the reconnection, you can imagine. The magnetic tension force will become weaker, but the magnetic pressure force will become stronger. So the flux rope will be ejected out. This is the formation of the episodic jet. Also the formation of coronal magnetic ejection itself. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, one interesting thing about the episodic jet is we often observe flares from black hole crystal disk. And such kind of flare is very likely physically associated with the episodic jet. This is again very similar or even same with the case of the sun. Because in the case of the sun, we have a solar flare. We have also have a CME or a mass ejection. They are physically associated with each other. This is also the case for uh, black hole. Okay. So, uh, Based on this idea, we did some uh, work uh, to model the flare observed in black hole space. Okay, so here reconnection will occur. Some electrons will be accelerated by the reconnection, and subsequent electrons will uh, collide with the accretion disk in spiritual uh, radiation, and also, of course, signal radiation will be uh, emitted. Uh, this will explain the observed flare. Okay, this is uh, our analytical work. So we calculate the evolution of the flux flow, evolution uh, height uh, as a function of time. And this is the uh, Rowland effect of electrons evolution with the time. This is uh, the field evolution. Okay. Calculation is very complicated. And if you look at our paper, also several tests or even 100 equations. <laughs> Uh, this is to an observation uh, of X near infrared uh, X ray flare in uh, Sagittarius A star. Because in Sagittarius star, there is a lot of data. This is a very hot topic in this field. 
this is again set the risk as a uh, uh, snapshot of this. So <coughs> here's the summary of the GET formation. Uh, now we agree GET uh, is uh, powered by black hole spin on the rotation disk. Uh, we correspond to BC GET or disk GET. But it is still not clear so far which one corresponds to the observed GET. Okay, this is a uh, very important uh, work people need to study. Okay. Uh, another one is if pointing flux, the model, the better for the Chinaye uh, model is correct, then we still have a question how to convert this pointing flux into radiation. Because pointing flux and radiation, they are different things. So usually people think we have to first convert the pointing flux into uh, uh, some electrons, particles. Then these electrons, after they are accelerated, they further uh, uh, radiate, they emit some radiation. But how this happens? Details still, details still are known. Okay. Uh, the next question is the composition of the jet. Okay. The leptons are also also are ions. This is again another. If it is a busy jet, it should be dominated by leptons, uh, electrons, and ions, and so on. But if it is a disk jet, it should be dominated by ions. Okay. okay. This is the uh, end of chapter five. Uh, you can ask some questions before we continue to chapter six. Okay, now I can ask questions. <coughs> I show you many images of the jet, right? Sheets of the jet, okay, well calibrated. But for wind, it is very difficult to observe. Because wind, the density in the wind is very small. And not like the jet, the uh, electrons are so easily accelerated, so radiation should be quite weak. Okay. Uh, and we do have some observation. Uh, but uh, most of them are indirect evidence. So this is why uh, we propose uh, maybe only with a uh, future uh, instrument uh, telescope if it's possible to detect them, uh, say SK. But in some uh, 18, we do find some tentative evidence. This is our ongoing work. For example, we are doing uh, uh, M81. And we found some uh, blue city in this one. In radio, Yes, yes. Uh, well, the uh, rotation measure. Very good idea. Yes. Uh, this is uh, 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 another uh, for you. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's a very good idea. Yeah. Because the rotation measure should be mainly used by the wind region. Oh, yes. So, is that possible at the sonic jet? Is that possible due to the like the uh, accretion instability? I mean, uh, like uh, you have the creep, mm -hmm. certainly some instability mm -hmm. occurs, mm -hmm. and sort of like uh, give you a perturbation mm -hmm. yeah. and then create a jet, yeah. sort yeah. of like a uh, solid. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is some people's idea for the photo. But my uh, argument is, uh, in this case, we should expect uh, some typical time scale. It is determined by a crisp time scale, right? But observationally, the time scale for the formation of episodic jet is much shorter than the crisp time scale. What do you mean co-evolution? I mean they affect each other. Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, when uh, interaction is co-evolution. Co uh, I mean co-evolution. Evolution. Evolution. Like uh, each other, they affect each other. Affect each other. Oh, I know. No. Co-evolution is uh, how uh, one way they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, uh, what do you mean by evolution? Yeah. Yes. 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 I'm afraid it's not so easy. Because yeah, because you know we have magnetic group in the back. So very difficult for plasma to come across the field. Yeah. Actually, there is already some paper, some works in this uh, aspect uh, by the, the lady originally from Poland. I forgot her name. Uh, worked in Cornell University for many years. His wife, uh, uh, the wife of La Lamex, I forgot the name. They did some, she did some work. You should know Lamex, right? Okay, uh, let's quickly go through the last chapter, reaching feedback. So I, I want to introduce this chapter because I want to introduce some uh, application or connection between small scale of black hole crystals to the large scale stuff which is a uh, galaxy evolution. This is very interesting in new field. Uh, it's very hot in very recent years. So if you, you can check the uh, uh, Nature Astronomy Journal uh, published this year, there is a review paper, review this field. And they uh, do a statistics uh, to count the uh, number of papers published in this year, recent year. They found the number of papers is still uh, exponentially increased. Yeah, huge amount of paper. <laughs> <laughs> so the first example for the interaction between jet or wind with ISM is Fermi bubble. Fermi bubble, I think uh, some high energy people are very, very, very interested. So Fermi bubble is uh, found by the Fermi uh, satellite. They found the two giant gamma bubbles uh, in our galaxy. This is the whole also this is a symmetric figure mass not clear. Okay, this is a galactic disk, this is a Fermi bubble. Okay, it is about 8 uh, kpc size. Okay. 
use other. Okay. So uh, some people first propose uh, bubble is formed by the interaction between J and ISF. Okay. Uh, this guy now is my colleague, Sakai of Okay. So uh, let us take J. So the assumption in this model is we must assume the direction of the jet is perpendicular to the magnetic plane, and the velocity of the jet is, should not be too large, should be smaller than this value. And then we also assume the mass law of velocity rate in the jet is uh, relatively large. So all these things I found for a different opinion. Because usually we found that the mass uh, loss the rate in the jet should be much, much smaller. And also the velocity of the jet should be much larger. Anyway. <coughs> Another proposal proposed is a quasar. Uh, uh, um, we propose the width emitted from the quasar. Uh, it's the formation mechanism of this Fermi bubble. This is a private university use. So uh, our model is we assume, uh, we, we think the bubble is formed by uh, a black hole prison uh, wind. Uh, the difference from this uh, this model is uh, both of uh, these models use wind, but they, they use the quasar wind, uh, namely uh, wind lumps from the uh, cities, but we use the wind lumps from hot physical. This is the difference. So we uh, we uh, make this assumption because uh, we know uh, from the uh, some study uh, the past activity of a secondary star is uh, also hot. It is still hot. So, so these are some details. So uh, let us show you the movie. <coughs> so the wind plumps from the operation boat at the interact with ISF. So uh, in, in, in our model, the collision rate is uh, not uh, a free parameter. It's uh, determined by some other independent constraint from the other studies, other people's work. Okay. The profit outflow is uh, determined by the small scale MHD translation I just talked about okay. using our trajectory method. So uh, this simulation is a three dimensional MHD and it is two fluid uh, simulation. We consider a cosmic ray and normal plasma. This is comparison with observation and some details comparison. Uh, the gamma ray mainly emitted from this uh, uh, permitted layer. Okay. There are some PP collision in this layer that produce pi and pi k. Oh, this is the comparison of the gamma ray spectrum. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, comparison with other observational results. Okay. For example, uh, now we have the relation to the temperature in the bubble and also the age and so on. Uh, we all see. Okay, let's talk about aging feedback. So aging feedback, uh, there is a this figure, if you attend the uh, International Astronomy Conference, this is almost the most popular figure in recent 10 years or so. It shows the correlation between the black hole mass and the uh, velocity dispersion of the bars of the galaxy. So we follow up on that uh, correlation. Okay. There are also some other similar figures. For example, this is so the black hole mass with, uh, uh, with the dimensional mass of the uh, bars. Uh, so this kind of creation is, a, uh, people think, is a strong evidence for the cool evolution of the black hole and the host galaxy. Because otherwise, it is hard to understand why. different galaxies, if there is no correlation, it's uh, very difficult to understand why there is, or there is a such good correlation. So this is, you really think, the strongest evidence for the co-evolution. 
So we also have some other evidences. So this is the galaxy luminosity function. Okay. So the test line showed the theoretical expectation. Okay. Uh, the solid line shows the real observational result. You can see uh, in the uh, high mass and the low mass end, there is some deviation compared with the observational data. In the high mass end, when the galaxy mass is uh, large, people usually think it is because of the aging feedback. The aging feedback suppress the growth of the galaxy. This is why we observationally we found a fewer galaxy than what we expected from the theory. So basically, why aging feedback is important? Why people now widely believe aging feedback is the key component of galaxy formation, uh, evolution? So there is uh, mainly it is uh, energetic uh, estimation. So this is the total energy emitted by the uh, black hole accretion disk. Okay. This is a mass black hole. This is a uh, efficiency. This is the total emitted energy. Okay. Then we compare this quantity with another one, with the gravitational energy of the realized sphere. Uh, for example, the stellar bulge uh, of the galaxy. The total energy of the bulge is roughly this value. The ratio is this one. We found that this value is not a half No, 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 only stellar mass. Yeah, because it's very small scale. This is a galaxy bulge. So the ratio is much larger than one. This means emitted energy by the black hole prison is far more enough to uh, to compare with the total gravitational energy of the about. So and essentially we have enough energy for it to feed back to the photo. So this is the symmetric figure of aging feedback. So suppose this is a large say elliptical galaxy and in the central uh, region we have a, a black hole and a prison disk. And uh, this uh, prison disk will emit a uh, jet, wind, and radiation. So all these uh, three kind of uh, output from the ETN will interact with the ISM in the host galaxy. And changing the spatial distribution of density and the temperature of the ISM. For example, this jet or wind or radiation, they, they will uh, push the gas surrounding the ETN, push them away. So the density will become smaller. And also, uh, uh, jet or wind or radiation can treat the ISM by shock or by direct content scattering. So the temperature will also become higher. So the change of the density and temperature will, of course, affect the star formation in the galaxy. So in this way, the evolution of the whole galaxy will be affected significantly. So this is why AGN can affect the evolution of the galaxy. On the other hand, the host galaxy can also, of course, affect the ETA. This is because the change of the properties surrounding the ETA, for example, the density temperature of the gas here, will, of course, affect the gas beauty of the black hole. Right? So they, are, they interact with each other. This is why we call them feedback. So this is, uh, there are two key issues for aging feedback study. One is how to determine the black hole accretion rate. This is very, of course, important. Another thing is, even though we know what the accretion rate, what is the a real output from the ETA? Okay. So this is how do we do this study. We resolve these complicated uh, hydrodynamic equations. So we consider many uh, physics, uh, for example, the stellar mass loss from dying stars, uh, gas depletion because of the star formation of the galaxy, and also uh, supernova feedback, energy and the mass feedback to the host galaxy. And also the summarization of the stellar wind because of the stellar dispersion motion, and so on. Okay. See here. <coughs> then we resolve these uh, uh, equations. Uh, some here, some physics we consider. How first things, uh, how do we consider angular momentum transport in the large scale, in the galaxy scale? So in the small scale, we know it is MR. Uh, uh, for the out, we have gravitational instability. Uh, but for the out, we use this so-called anisotropic gravitational power. Of course, they do this work. This is some spiral-like structure, maybe bar or bar 
our uh, NS as a topic structure. So we will produce a gravity now a talk, which can come for angular momentum. So for the galaxy model, this is a gravity we consider. This is a black hole gravity, stable power flow, population, dark matter, and so on. So this is how do we consider supernova contribution. Uh, this is how do we do uh, star formation. Uh, this is uh, uh, how do we calculate the relative heating or cooling because of the central EGA to the uh, ISF in the galaxy. We consider bread temperature cooling or complete heating or cooling. It can be heating or cooling, depending on which, which one which one is large. This one describes the average energy of photon emitted from the EGA. Uh, this quantity describes the temperature of the ISF. Cooling consider the metallicity of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not yet. We, we, uh, it, yeah. Here we consider solar metallicity. I have to speed up. <laughs> so, this is how we set up of the code. So, we, we propose a fancy name based. Uh, in Chinese, it's a quan zhang. Quan zhang means authority. Another quan zhang is the name of our code. So, so this is the uh, uh, about 10 to 4 PC, a large scale. Yeah. So this is uh, the light probability in this time scale of a pair of gigahertz. So you can see most of the time the AG is quite uh, deep, but personally it is become into a lunar city. This is called the AG duty cycle. So this is the typical lifetime of AG. We compare with uh, some observations, they typically to define the year. This is the black hole mass growth. Uh, we found that uh, the wind from the crystal disk play a dominant role to control the Black hole mass growth. This is a duty cycle. How many fractions of the time the gene will stay below or above some given eddy duration? Okay, thank you. It's time now. Busy and for his visit this time, I think it's shorter than 45 hours. Yeah, he's going to catch his flight. Yeah, he, he booked his, his flight. Okay, not, not by me, okay? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I, I have to go to Beijing to attend another yeah. conference. Yes, and then, of course, if you have any question, I think um, he welcomes you to send email to him. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check out my email from the website of the Shanghai Observatory. Uh, easily found it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then let's thank Dr. Yuan Fong again. <laughs>